uh, let's talk a little bit about this whole notion of change. So we dream the dream, we dare to dream, and we say that response to intervention is truly what we believe we should be doing for children, but it is a change. And it's a change in which we look at how we deliver the instruction in a more formalized way. It's a change in which we look at how we have checks and balances focused on data. And I tell people all the time, and being from, I've been in education my whole career, and being from behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, working one-on-one -on -one with children and training teachers, the one thing I can tell you is that sometimes we make decisions based on emotion because kids are so important to us. And sometimes it's very easy for us to say, oh, that didn't work, let me try something else without looking at the data. And when what we really understand is that this is hard work and uh, that everything we do, especially with the struggling learner, is hard, very rewarding, but hard. And sometimes we have to stay the distance. And one of the big emphasis on RTI with the changes, don't change your course unless the data tells you to change your course. I've sat in meetings over the years in school districts where we sat together in an IAT meeting or something, and we've tried it for a week or two, and we didn't get that score up as fast as we want. So right away, we want to find the next fix. And then in order for everyone to feel good, we start making decisions, but we moved away from the focal point, which was the child. And I've also seen our educators sometimes, because they're feeling very stressed, tax is a very big stressor in the state of Texas. And this is the first time I've heard a principal publicly say it's not about tax, which is wonderful. Because tax, to me, will come if we do all this other stuff. And, and, but we have this notion that, right? We have this notion that if we don't align the intervention to the tax, we're not going to get to the tax. And so the change comes with trusting your instincts as a teacher, trusting the support from your administrator, giving the support that needs to be given through either the resource allocation or just the emotional support that an administrator often has to give during RTI, correct? And then we can really start talking about change. And what I always tell my teachers is change is a good thing. Change is somewhat painful at times. We're always going to have a margin of challenge that brings about some frustration. That's what we do in learning, but it's also what we do as growing as adults. But I'm telling you, children's minds are easier to change than adult minds. And so sometimes when that change gets a little hard, we start to focus on the negatives of the change instead of the positives or the gifts that the change can give us. What I see in very functional RTI systems is that teachers will tell me, I will never do any other way working with the child. But getting there was hard. And so the gifts of the RTI process in the end is the, the tremendous growth we see in all our children. And uh, that tremendous growth then produces trust. There was a question I, one of you asked uh, uh, a little bit ago about the parent involvement. What I find is when you have a strong RTI system, your parents trust you. They trust you because they're not getting the negative calls. The kids aren't going home not wanting to go to school. They feel a part of the school community. And my whole belief system with RTI is we believe parents are our partners, no matter from what background they come from, no matter from what degree of challenge we have with our children. If we have trust from our parents, they will partner with us. And that is one of the biggest gifts because we know in all the research that says parental support and how important it is for learning to occur. So when we think about change, we're going to think about it in the positive instead of the negative. And it's the gifts that come, not the, the difficulty in making the change. Now, one of the challenges we have in RTI is it is hard. It takes a lot of time, and it is hard. Everybody that has walked this walk knows that it's not about putting a binder together, listing a few interventions, and then going on our way. If, if it is, then we're nowhere further than we were before. And so what happens is there's a higher level of expectations for our administrators, for our teachers, for our children, and for our parents. And as we layer on those expectations, that's where we have to have the supports in place so that that change can occur. So it's hard and it takes time. Now, you've all heard me say this before. You have to know where your districts are in their process. Some of them might not be in a position where they're ready yet to discuss intervention with you because they have to understand data. 
some of them might not even be in the position to talk about data because they don't know the system and they don't understand the problem solving. So it takes time and we know it takes three to five years initially to build the foundations for RTI. So we have three to five years of working through the kinks, building foundations, helping people feel real comfortable about what they're doing. And then after the three to five years, we then have to support that. We continue with the trust. The other huge impact that we think about is school districts are living, breathing organisms, which means change occurs at the district level and the campus level continuously, and sometimes unexpectedly. And so how do we build a system that withholds and withstands those changes? I have a school district that recently, I was working with for several years, was, they were doing very well in RTI and um, kind of let them go to fly, I have their wings. And then I get a call from them this year and they need me back. And when they started talking to me about what was happening, I said, where was the sustainability in your change? Well, the superintendent left, a couple key curriculum people left, and the RTI process just kind of imploded. And so I said, what you had to do was to sustain that process, you had to continue to nurture it. So there needs to be continual nurturing. And, and for our teachers, the nurturing comes in understanding the interventions they're going to use, how to align the intervention with the student need. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, one of the biggest barriers that I'm seeing with the data collection and the intervention. So change is very, very important. 